and to give our voice to citizens. Also by the net, for example, but you're right, not every people has the access to the, to the net. It's also a case, a matter of, uh, of age, or of, uh, of use. There's a lot of people in, in Italy, for example, which is not used to, to use, uh, is not used to, to, to use PC and, and the internet. And this is our commitment. Every day, me, my colleagues and me, are going to not so important uh, appointment like this one in the United States building, but uh, we, we, we usually uh, uh, share our information with citizens vis-a-vis. Uh, -vis. I hope I answered your question. Okay, so I guess we have uh, one more question. This is uh, over there, Caterina. The silver? Ah, okay. Thank you. My name is Caterina Misericordia. Uh, to Mr. Le Le Levy, please. Um, going back to GMO, uh, you said before um, this is an issue which is not going to change in Europe. Uh, so this is a commitment. I mean, you are committed not to have any, to get any change in, it in Europe sorry, about GMO in order to protect uh, citizens, people, uh, from uh, uh, possible uh, effects uh, uh, we, we know could, could um, affect uh, the, the, health, the health of uh, the people. Is it a commitment of yours? Thank you. Oh, you know, I, I'm, I'm a humble civil servant, so even if I and I, I, I can commit, but what matters more is that other people who are much more important than I have committed to this. The former president of the Trade Commission, the current Trade Commissioner, um, the current president of the European Commission have committed not to change uh, the GMO legislation as a result of TTIP. And, and even if, as I said earlier, we were stupid enough to agree a change in the TTIP, it would never be voted by the European Parliament and by the member states. So I think we know what the political realities are in Europe. Um, and so you should not be afraid that this will happen. Um, but just on GMO, I think we should also know what the reality is. Um, Europe has authorized 68 GMOs, uh, two for cultivation and 66 or 64 for uh, food, for feeding animals. We import every year 34, 35 million tons of genetically modified soybeans that our farmers need to feed their animals. Um, so that's the reality today. And uh, these animals are then uh, slaughtered and, and eaten. And um, so we should not think that Europe is close to GMOs. That's not the reality. That's maybe what you wish, but that's not the reality. Today, people have uh, also, the, in a way, the choice to take uh, GMO uh, products or not. Um, and the, um, the, the, the rules, if, if you follow the topic, a bit have, have changed and are, will keep on changing because the, the Commission thought it was not appropriate to be in a position where the majority of member states do not oppose a proposal, but do not uh, uh, re reject it either, and then the Commission has to take the decision. So that was uh, considered undemocratic, and so now the decision has been, the proposal has been made to make sure that member states could opt out if they wanted for uh, either the cultivation, that's existing law, or for the use of GMOs, that's a, a very recent legislative proposal. And these things will not change as a result of TTIP. These are fundamental rules of the game, if you want, on, on GMOs. Uh, thank you, Mr. Levy. Actually, I would like to add to this that as a European citizen, I'm most grateful to the European Commission and the European Union for making sure that in any case, the GMOs, um, GMO is indicated in the food whenever there is some kind of contact with regular food. There is a, an obligation that this is made, uh, a, the public is made aware of it, so it can make an intelligent choice. I mean, what what he wants to purchase or not, and it's something that also in the U.S. there is an attempt to be to be caught, to copy the European system in this in these regards, and having also a labeling uh, uh, so that the citizens can make a, a, a free them choice of what they prefer to purchase. I, I think we are about to close. I mean, unless there is one more question, particularly, in, yes, please. Yeah. I'm sorry, I have just something to add about this issue. I, I in this way, 
and uh, I'm happy to hear from your voice that, but uh, I have to disagree, but in the reality, they, they, uh, what it happens is quite different. And I can give you some example. Uh, under pressure of United States and also of big companies, commission retired, for example, uh, the, the, the drafted proposal about uh, endocrine disruptors. And this is the first uh, uh, example I can give to you. Uh, last uh, year, uh, we commission changed the, the, the rule about uh, the use of uh, uh, lactic acid, for example, in Europe, which is very dangerous. We know that, but it's now it's uh, possible to use for washing uh, meat, for example, in Europe just since one year. And we are just now working, I'm shadow rapporteur, on a legislation about cloning uh, animal for, uh, uh, for food uh, use, for example. And this is another case in which we saw that the world is changing under the pressure of big companies' interest. And I can't agree that our world doesn't change uh, uh, with pressure of uh, trade and uh, big companies' interests. We can see it uh, every day. We, I have uh, three children, and uh, my life was very different than, uh, than theirs, and not only for the, the, the way that the life is going on, but just because business interests are really different than our interests. And so, uh, I'm sorry, but we have many change even before the approval of TTIP. And also about labeling, I can say that uh, our internal legislation is quite changing in the last year, and we have not more obliged, for example, to indicate the, the, um, the provenience, the, 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 uh, the manufacturing place. And this is uh, what is changed uh, in, the, in the recent time after uh, pressure of uh, uh, external uh, uh, companies, and uh, uh, I think in uh, in the in the like, seeing in the future uh, the, the the treaty as treaty or CETA. Well, thank you so much uh, to Tiziana Begin. I think we have to wrap up the, today's uh, section. I would like to very much thank the Division of Economic and Social Affairs, Mr. Lambrabat, for helping uh, this event take place. The European delegation in Washington, we are most honored of the presence of Mr. Levy and his contribution is tr really treasured because it gives us a better understanding as citizens and also to the members of the European Parliament we connected with, Mr. Junat, uh, Mr. Zarena, uh, as well, we, they had to leave earlier and because of the time difference and they had obligations in the parliament. So that's, uh, you know, um, that, that, that's uh, something that I thought we have to deal with. Uh, Mrs. Begin, we are thinking about her participation as well. I would like also to thank the derivation of the European Union to the United Nations for their continued support to the European Civil Society, uh, together with obviously again the European delegation in Washington, to whom we have cooperated over many, many years. Uh, I hope that the audience found this uh, um, discussion today educational, f not only for Europeans, but also for the priorities of the United Nations family, where the subject is also being followed in other parts of the world. And, uh, you know, we, uh, we do a, a service to, to the UN and to uh, our, our fellow citizens. And once again, thank you so much and, uh, for your participation and contribution. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.